the 6-5 is on the road today. We are in Washington, D.C. And I am excited for some conversations that we are having today about, well, we're going to talk a little AI and we're going to talk about a number of different things. But we are also going to be talking about knowledge, the transfer of knowledge, education, the continuation of agents and so much more. I'm very pleased today to be joined by Priya, David. Welcome both to the show. It's really nice to be here with you both. How are we? Thank you, Daniel. All good. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you, Daniel. Doing well. So the the world is changing really, really quickly. And BMC, you are in this really exciting inflection of the business, right? You're going from an era where, you know, by the way, a very large business, diversified business, business that kind of has two major parts. And one of the biggest parts has long been around mainframe and software. And we, of course, are seeing that business change really, really quickly. I kind of wanted to start off, you know, and David, I'll start this with you, talking a little bit about what's going on with the evolution with knowledge and talent. Um, we know that people that kind of came up in this business are evolving, they're changing. We see AI as a possibility for a new way for knowledge and learning to be accepted. I know you're leading this charge yeah. uh, at BMC. Talk a little bit about kind of how the company's thinking about this transformation of knowledge um, and the modernization so that we can continue to benefit in the era of hybrid AI along with the you know, historic mainframe. Absolutely. Uh, so I think, I think we can all recognize that we're going through a transition, transition of skills through the organizations, et cetera. And knowledge is absolutely critical to what we do on the mainframe. But one thing I'd say, um, well, some examples, by the way, that we've heard from customers who've lost over 3,000 years of skill in, in a year or so. And that is a massive challenge to, to many organizations. But what we're not losing, we're not losing knowledge. Knowledge is still with us, it's still in our organizations, it's still in, whether it's in Teams calls or design documents or, or whatever it may be, we have knowledge. We're losing the skill that's able to take that knowledge and apply it to the business. So one thing that BMC is looking at doing is, is how we can take generative AI and we can capture that knowledge, capture that information that's in the business, it's still within the business, and apply it and inject it to the new subject matter experts at the right time in what they're trying to do. As they're trying to change the business, having that real expert on their shoulder. And it's being phenomenally successful so far. Priya, in your role, you obviously have this need to make sure the market better understands mm -hmm. how this knowledge transfer is taking place and how this technology is acting as an enabler. As you're sort of thinking about how you can position BMC, the work it's doing right now to bring the knowledge to the market through AI, what are some of the challenges that you're seeing and some of the, the biggest opportunities that are sort of coming to light? As David suggested, it's going really well. Yeah. Kind of how, how are you sort of balancing? Because there is a challenge of skill the opportunity to me is kind of the beating don't know. It's the awareness, people seeing that this this capability is there. Yeah, it's a really good question, Daniel, because I think so, you know, I cover solutions marketing and so I, you know, talk to a lot of customers, also understand what's happening in the market. And I think that in many ways with Gen AI, there's almost like a need to imagine what the use cases can be. And when customers can start to understand like discrete examples of how they can leverage Gen AI, like, oh. I could open up a piece of COBOL code and I could actually get an explanation of what that code means. That could be useful for me. Then the light bulbs start to go off in their head about, okay, where can I apply this to my daily life? So it's, it, there's a theory behind it, but there's also the practice of how I can see the value in my daily life. And when people can find those use cases, that's when they start to go and say, hey, this is something I need to go check out or try out. But there's also this kind of overwhelming feeling I imagine you're getting when you're looking at solutions partners, um, 40 plus thousand LLMs uh, to choose from. Kind of how are you thinking about making sure that you're getting to them, but not further overwhelming? Further overwhelming, yeah. <laughs> um, it's true. I mean, we a lot of the discussions I think Dave, you've had with customers, of, they actually start with like, what is the foundation of AI, right? And mm -hmm. How do you get to that foundation? How do you set it up for your organization? So some ideas you, of what you... You yeah. mentioned 42, 43,000 okay. LLMs, yeah. Yeah. which will be different tomorrow, right? It, and putting it in context, about three years ago, there were about 120. 
right? And these are all open source, commercial, et cetera. Yeah. I think one of the things that we've, we're finding is that there is no one LLM that solves everything. There's no one LLM to rule them all. There are, and we're starting to see this emerge, LLMs that are very tuned to specific areas. Maybe LLMs that are tuned to the code development journey. LLMs that are tuned to problem diagnosis. And that's where we're starting to get into the concept of SLMs. So SLMs being industries calling them small language models, I kind of like to call them specialized language models. Um, because I'd, I'll give you an analogy. You don't necessarily go to your dentist to ask how to fix your car. You go to a specific kind of uh, center of excellence, uh, center of uh, excellence uh, LLM that you can kind of, you know it's trained with COBOL or you know it's trained with JCL or you know it's trained with root cause analysis. Um, that's what we're starting to see really emerge now is that really that era of SLMs and it's, that's incredibly exciting for us. Yeah, I like that you called out SLMs. I think there's going to be some ongoing debate yeah. as to how you know, we actually refer to them. But I think what we are finding out is that the, the real scaling laws of the enterprise is going to happen when large models are made smaller, more purpose-built, more efficient for the, for the deployment. Just as a quick follow on that, how do you make sure though, like what's the BMC role in making sure that right model is selected? So we have a, a capability um, within our technology that we call Bring Your Own LLM, which is very much about around, we have a, an LLM library, LLMs that we've tried for various kind of use cases, and it's all, as Prez said, it's all use case based. Um, if you're going down a developer route, there are certain LLMs that are good for explaining code. There are other LLMs that are very good for augmenting code and others that are even better for testing code. So we'll look at a bunch of those and we'll look at the, the efficacy, the accuracy of the answers that kind of come back and we'll give recommendations. But at the end of the day, it's down to the customer. What does the customer want to use? What are they authorized to use? What do they have governance around? So we like that flexibility that we give to customers. And Priya, how do you guys envision the impact that AI-driven automation is going to have in mainframe development in the era of sort of hybrid AI? Because, you know, a, mainframe is a part, but it's mainframe, it's public cloud, private cloud, you know, it's, it's edge, it's everything. How are you guys kind of seeing uh, AI-driven automation impacting that? Well, I think the way to think about it is, you know, I think Gartner has a stat that says that 20, something between like, let's say 15 to 30% of core systems sit in mainframes in multiple industries. So the productivity of being able to empower a mainframe workforce to be able to update applications, to create new applications as the case may be, that's going to help companies to actually go out and innovate. Um, to be able to maintain the software better, to manage those systems better, to keep them up and running. So I think at the end of the day, like the way to think about it is, what are those core systems and what are they driving? And to the extent that that productivity improvement or that uptime improvement can help the rest of the business, you know, it could be a 15% improvement, a 20% improvement, we don't know yet, right? We're still learning. Uh, but that's gonna have an overall impact on the bottom line and the top line of any of these companies. Priya and David, I want to thank you both so much. It sounds very promising. And as I see it, the ability for you to leverage the technology to deliver this knowledge that is going to slowly fade if we do not find a way. This is such a great utilization, such a great use case for generative AI to make sure that we maintain that knowledge, bring that knowledge forward, and continue to enable companies to find that optimization and, and efficiency growth. So. Thank you both so much for joining us, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. And thank you all so much for being part of the 6.5 community. Hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our content. We look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye-bye for now.